In this video, I call Heinz Guderian at 3 a.m. Hello everyone and welcome to this Three Colors Up. In this one, we're gonna be tackling the SDKFZ222 Scout car. There's a lot of twos in there. Um, this is one of the very popular armored uh, reconnaissance vehicles the Germans used in the early to mid-war period. It's got a 20 millimeter cannon on it, it's got a coaxial MG34, it's quite nippy, it's quite nice looking, it's very aesthetic, very sleek and sloped armor and stuff like that on it. Uh, you see a lot of this in the early war in uh, the early European invasions uh, through Poland, Belgium and France and so on like that. So there is quite a lot of images and pictures of uh, images and footage of these things driving around. There's a few restored that still exist, but there's also a lot of replicas out there. So if you're looking for a real one, there's a few places you can go and you can find out about. But in general, we're going to be painting one from the Gentleman's War Box set, but we're going to be painting it as an early war sort of France 1940 uh, kind of campaign look to it. So it's going to have, it has the grey on it, it has very subtle markings on it and uh, not a lot of weathering as well, done quite subtle weathering. So hopefully you enjoy this one. It should be quite a quick one and uh, yeah, without further ado, hope you enjoy it. Let's get down to the table. So the first steps with our triple two here, uh, primed in chaos black from all over and then a top down of grey here just to give me a little bit of difference uh, on the angles of the vehicle. I'm not sure how much that's really going to matter, but it is going to leave certain areas a little bit brighter and certain areas a little bit darker. So with that done, we're going to have to remove the turret just very gently, hopefully gently anyway. Uh, if I put this on too tight now, it won't come off, maybe. There we go. So I have it glued so that this is the part holding the seats on and um, that's how the, the turret is fixed down. So move that to the side and we're going to be putting our base colour down. Our base colour is going to be Vallejo model colour German grey because we're going early war. And uh, that's being put through my airbrush. And my airbrush it's thinned uh, two to one for the paint. So two parts thinner, one part paint. And we're going to do several, uh, a couple of good light coats at least. So let's just check it. All works fine. And we'll just get on with it. With the airbrushing done, it's now time to move on to a couple of different colours. The first of which is going to be Citadel Corvus Black. We're going to be using the airbrush paint for this because it's nice and thin. And this is going to be for several items. So first up, we're going to paint the tyres. We're then on the turret, we're going to paint the gun barrels and the little antenna mount as well. I don't believe there's going to be any other parts for this. So it's just going to be a matter of going in and just giving it a coat of paint. So with the Corvus Black now down on the tires and the, the gun barrel, you can see it's basically the same colour as the German Grey. It's not quite there, but it is a little bit darker, but not much. So what we're going to do now is um, put some Null Oil onto those same locations, and that is going to dull it down quite nicely and um, give us a bit more differentiation uh, between our parts here. So we'll just very quickly chuck some null oil onto that and it's just going to make the tires stand out just a little bit more so the black wash is now down it's diff it's um making the tire stand out a little bit we're going to move on to some base coating and the first one is going to be panzer aces light rust another vallejo color we'll put some of that down there and this is going to be for our exhausts so we'll just get the brush probably made too much water in there but that's all right so we have our exhausts here. We have two mufflers down the side of that mud guard, and then the exhausts come up into a little bit of an armored shroud about there. So with the two exhausts painted, I'm not sure if the light rust is really sort of accurate, but what it is giving us is a little bit of contrast because everything is rather dull, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> so the next thing I want to move on to is a little bit of canvas work. Now there's not a lot of canvas on this 222. Uh, it's basically just the cover for the spare wheel. And what I'm going to be using for that is Vallejo model color field gray, so German field gray. And uh, 
I think it's actually more of a regular sort of canvasy color, but I think the field gray is going to be close enough. Now, there's two things I want to point out here historically. Um, obviously, this is canvas, and occasionally the covers for these lights, these lights are usually the proper big dome silvered lights, but they have these covers over them to turn them into blackout lights. And uh, sometimes these appear in canvas, and sometimes these appear as metal inserts onto the the lights from what I've seen on some pictures and stuff so I'm not sure what way I want to do these I'm probably going to paint them in the canvas anyway uh, because it's just going to give a little bit more color so we're just going to try and paint the face of the light in I think it will will just give us enough difference of color although I think the the actual canvas cover is like over the edge so maybe we'll just take those over the edge but we're going to paint these in and then we'll do the spare tire in fact yes i think i will just cover the whole outer part now at this point we have the canvas painted i've also taken a little bit of matte white just any old matte white and painted the tops of these little pieces here these if you haven't seen them before don't know what they are are a driver's aid um, so he is able to look out his vision port and see these two white dots. These two white dots are meant to show him where the front corners of the vehicle are, particularly when he's locked down or he has restricted vision because he doesn't have a lot of vision in these things. You see quite a few vehicles with these, uh, particularly mostly on the German side. Occasionally you see them on the American side where um, sometimes half tracks or the um, juice and a half lorries, the GMC lorries and stuff like that, will have them on their bumpers if they have an extended one with a winch on it. But the Germans seem to do these pretty extensively with some of their lighter vehicles and some of their um, prime movers, like the, the larger half tracks and stuff like that. So just a little thing to, you know, nerd it up a little bit, bit of tank gibberish for you. Now we're moving on to decals and I have them down here already soaked in water. So we have two Balkan crosses we have the front and two rear um, number plates. Uh, this model came out of the Gentleman's War box, so it, it was made for Africa Corps, but I wanted to do an early war vehicle, so we're having to go with whatever decals we had in that box. So they're probably not period accurate, but it should be okay. So we've got our front one here, and I'm just going to be loosely putting them on and pushing them into place first. I'm pretty sure for earlier war vehicles, these crosses would be bigger and off the back deck of the vehicle a little bit more, but we're going to put these ones here. Put that one there. All right, that's the decals on. We're then going to take a little bit of um, decal softener, the Green Stuff World stuff. Just a couple of drops of that and then with a fairly dry brush what we're going to do is just allow it to soak over the top of the transfers and that will help settle them down and there and then we'll do it on these two number plates as well now this stuff will soften the decals very quickly, so we've pulled that out of place a little bit. Move that back into place and get a bit more of the softener. And we'll just put them in there like that. Now, we have to let that dry, we have to let the decals settle. Once they've settled, we're going to be covering, or we're going to be um, giving the entire model a coat of satin varnish, so a slight gloss varnish. I have some up here, but we're going to be putting a bit of this through the airbrush, giving the whole thing a coat of that, because we want to protect the colours that we have now for when we come to a couple of weathering steps. So right now we're going to let it dry, satin varnish the whole vehicle, then when we come back we'll look at the beginning of our weathering. So with the decal settled and a satin varnish over all the parts, including our turret up here as well, we're now ready to begin a little bit of weathering. And I want to start with a little bit of chipping, but uh, because it's an early vehicle, I want to run it 
as um, it hasn't had a lot of action yet. So we're going to be running very light weathering on this vehicle. And we're going to start with some Vallejo oily steel. And that's just going to be tiniest little bit of paint chipping uh, just on edges and stuff like that. We're not going to go too uh, mad on this like we usually do with some of these German vehicles because the, the lighter colors really give you a lot of scope for messing around uh, with weathering. So what I'm going to do is take this brush and we're just going to lightly touch a few edges just to bring them up a little bit. And anywhere, so there was a bit of paint damage there. Anywhere where the vehicle is going to be climbed on or stepped over or things are going to be opened or... So with a little bit of silver on there and uh, a little bit on the gun barrels on the top of the turret and around the back of the turret, I think we're ready to move on. And what we're going to be doing is taking some Agrax Earthshade and covering the whole vehicle with it. Now we're doing that because we're going to be doing it quite thin and because we have a satin varnish over the whole model it won't tint anything that we have. It'll be an additive step on top of everything so it shouldn't stain our existing paintwork and if we go thin enough it should settle into some recesses and uh, not make a huge mess of things. So here we go just going to give it a thin coat over the entire vehicle to start toning things down a little bit. With the Agrax dry, I did one little thing off camera as well and put a little bit of oily steel into the headlights just to show them up a little bit more. I also put a little bit of non-oil wash into the vision slits on the front. I'm not sure that's going to stay there over this next step, so if it doesn't, which it probably won't, I'm going to put it on after this step, which is going to be very interesting because I recently picked up some of this AK Interactive's landing gear dust effect and I've played with it a little bit on um, something else and thought it would be really good to try on a uh, gaming miniature because it kind of acts like a general dust, not a specific dust as such, you know, just driving around and this, that and the other, on-road, off-road, whatever, and it's just a general dusty buildup. So it's an enamel wash, as most of uh, AK's products are, and I thought it would be worth trying out on R222. I think it would give a very interesting contrast uh, to the vehicle. I think it would be a very genuinely good looking effect. So we're going to put it on neat on the bottom uh, part of the vehicle inside the mud guards around the tires, underneath the superstructure of the vehicle, that sort of thing, in and around the chassis. And then what I'm going to do is use a bit of thinner uh, to work it onto the top areas of the vehicle, sort of make a fade from heavy to light. So what we'll do is start applying it by stippling the dust in on the bottom, the lower parts of the vehicle inside these mud guards and stuff like that, make it look like a good heavy build up over the tires and stuff like that. And what I'm going to aim to do here is to make it fairly heavily dusted. So we want the, the effect to be quite heavy and very noticeable. And I think when we get to the stage of using some thinners to start to move it around a bit, I think we're going to find we're going to get quite an interesting effect from it. So we'll apply it here and then what I'm going to do is take a little bit of my odorless thinners here. This is going to be kind of a, an ongoing process across the whole vehicle and take some of that onto my palette and really thin that down a little bit. And then the idea is to go from the heavy areas and work up over the vehicle a little bit like that. Take a little bit more off the brush than that. And then we can work it onto the upper areas like that. And I think this is going to give us a very interesting finish. Hopefully, without worrying about it looking too unrealistic or anything like that. The, the other project I used this on 
showed me the potential of it. Like it, it does, uh, it does move around quite easily. It does fade in and out of itself rather well. Even a damp cloth, when this stuff is dry, tends to reactivate it enough to move it around. So what we can do here is focus it into the tread of the tires and then just work it around the inside, the back of the headlights there, anywhere all this dust is going to accumulate on the, the vehicle as it's driving around. Make sure it doesn't build up too much just on the bottom surfaces here. Something like this is kind of what I'm aiming for. We want to keep it heavier down on the bottom parts of the chassis and inside these mud guards. I don't mind so much if it starts coming off the wheels because that's kind of a bit more accurate, a bit more interesting and realistic looking. But underneath the vehicle, around this chassis and this lower plate and stuff like that, really want to go pretty heavy. So we're going to go ahead and then do this. And once this step is done, the plan is to give the whole vehicle a matte varnish. And once the matte varnish is done, that should be the model finished. So with our dust all sorted and a matte varnish down on the model, I would say we have our little SDKFZ222 finished. And do you know what? It looks all right. I think keeping it a little bit cleaner is so far as like paint chipping and that sort of stuff has worked out nicely. And that dust effect, I think really does sort of nail down that kind of France 1940 kind of, you know, summer 1940 offensive uh, look to it quite well. Um, I think Lieutenant Gruber would be rather happy of his, with his little tank. It's maybe a bit too dirty for his taste, but there you are. Um, all in all, a pretty straightforward color scheme, obviously, because early war generally is just gray. I think the Panzers themselves had the, the gray and brown two-tone going on at the time. But I think in general, we have quite a charming looking little scout car with a pretty simple straight to the point color scheme would look great in some early war tables and some early war games would be very nice. Anyway, as always, thank you so much for watching. If you have any comments, please leave them down below. And uh, until next time, take care, stay safe and see you again really soon. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.